If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Thank you very much. Next to the clerk, please call the roll. There are nine present. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item uh, is Mayor's appointments. City Attorney. We have one appointment, and that's Thomas Binder, uh, that we appointed to the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet, uh, representing the Near North Neighborhood Festival. That will lie over. Uh, next item on the agenda is Public Forum. City Clerk. The first person is Gary Toffner. Gary, can you please state your name and address for us, please? Gary Taufner, 2606 Gray Fox Court. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Okay. I want to thank the mayor, city administrator, city clerk, and the city attorney to speak tonight on document 3.1, which is being referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. I am here tonight to voice my opinion on our local channel 990 from Spectrum. As many of you know, this channel airs our local government meetings, the Knights of Columbus sponsored grocery, which airs Monday through Saturday at 8.30 a.m. and on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. and our local parades, other local talks, interviews, and even some local church services. Unfortunately, our technology for this channel is from the Stone Age. The coax cable that we are using dates back to 1980, and I repeat that, 1980. The quality and sound from this channel most of the time is just unacceptable to our local citizens of Sheboygan. It is down more than what it is up running. This has been going on for years, and it's time for a stop. The July 4th parade was televised, and you could not even make out the pictures that it was showing. My 94-year-old uncle was really looking forward to watching it on the channel 990, but he was very disappointed when he couldn't, and I am sure other city taxpayers felt the same way. Members of the Knights of Columbus that sponsor, and I repeat, sponsor the rosary, are embarrassed and are very disappointed, as well as our local Catholics in the city of Sheboygan, that they cannot watch this channel properly. Some of our local elderly citizens who are Catholic depend on this channel to watch and listen to the rosary, and it is a regular routine for them to watch it daily. I myself watch this channel for the rosary on a daily basis. For the population of the city of Sheboygan, we deserve the right to have a local channel that we can watch and hear properly. My alderman, Jim Boran, has received dozens of complaints from residents in his own area. When he comes home from a meeting, his own wife complains that she couldn't hear any of the meetings most of the times. I believe she even gave up watching it on the channel 990. That's not saying a hell of a lot. I called Mayor Van Andersteen to voice my concern on this matter. His remark was to watch it on my computer. Most elderly city taxpayers don't even own a computer, so this is not a correct solution to our problem. Our city has spent thousands of unnecessary dollars to change the city logo to the spirit on the lake, but they cannot spend necessary dollars on getting our local channel 990 up to date with current technology. 
we have $800,000 in the cable fund right now, and I am told it will cost $80,000 to bring this channel up to date. Then our local citizens of Sheboygan could watch a much deserving and important local channel in Sheboygan. Let's get this bad situation corrected and make the city of Sheboygan great once again. Thank you for listening to me tonight and for your time. Thank you. Next is Dulcie Johnson. Can you state your name and address for us, please? Dulcie Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. One of the items on tonight's agenda concerns changes to the parking rules at Volrath Bowl. The popular Monday night food truck event creates a rather dangerous situation with food trucks parked on North 3rd Street and pedestrians crossing in various places to and from the food trucks. The change to the parking rules allows parking on Volrath Boulevard. I hope that the document will be amended to require food trucks to park on Volrath Boulevard and allow customers to park on North 3rd Street. It's easier to observe pedestrian traffic when cars are parked rather than a larger vehicle like a food truck. Such an arrangement would make it much safer for pedestrians. <clears throat> And now in the interest of transparency, I will present my annual State of the City's Ambulance Service Report based on data received in an FOIA request for the operation of the service in 2017. The ambulance budget only includes salaries and benefits for four firefighters, but operating three ambulances 24-7 requires 21 firemen. Salaries and benefits for the four firemen was $374,000 or $94,000 per hire. Using that as a base, salaries and benefits for 21 firemen would be 1,964,000. EMS calls accounted for 76% of the incidents that the department responded to. 76% of 1,964,000 is 1,473,000. Total expenses were 1,886,000. This includes 106,000 for leasing the ambulances and 89,000 for contracted billing services. Total billings were $3,868,000. Actual collections were $1,263,000 or 33% of billings. That means that your constituents subsidize 67% of the ambulance service for city and non-city users. Your constituents never paid a subsidy to Orange Cross. Subtracting expenses from revenues results in a loss of $622,000. The amount calculated for the firemen is based on the salary and benefits of $94,000 for the four hires included in the budget, an increase of $6,500 per hire. The average salary and benefits of the additional longer serving firemen would be higher than that base figure. Also, the figures do not include any administrative costs. It takes more than four firemen and an ambulance to operate the service. Deputy Chief Butler was hired in 2007 to run the ambulance, but his salary and benefits have never been included in the ambulance budget. If these additional costs were included, the actual cost of providing the service would be much higher and the loss much greater. At the time the city decided to take over the ambulance service, a story in the Sheboygan Press on May 30, 2007 noted, and I quote, if the service loses money, city fire officials will cut the department's budget to make up for the loss. Of course, it's easier to avoid that situation when you don't count all expenses. On Wednesday afternoon, I was standing in my front yard with the local businessmen when we noticed a fire department ambulance driving south in Broughton Drive. No lights, no sirens, just tooling along. He said, they must be out for a joyride. It happens quite often. Earlier this summer, I observed a fire department ambulance driving down Clifton or Clement, obviously returning from Memorial Hospital, and it headed south on 3rd Street, undoubtedly on its way to take the scenic route back to the station. 
My favorite story, however, starts at 6th and Penn. There was an ambulance ahead of me, no lights, no siren. Proceeded down Penn and turned north on Broughton Drive, which was also my route home. It continued on past the Y and the North Side Beach House. I wondered where it might be going, so I followed it. It drove along Broughton Drive, up North Point to North Point, up the hill, down Lincoln to 3rd Street, west on Superior, south on 8th Street, and to the New York Avenue Station. The stories of errant ambulances are common, and I'm sure Chief Romus does not approve of such meanderings, but evidently the ambulance drivers feel that they have carte blanche to go wherever they choose if they're not responding to a call. In 2017, the department responded to 69 building fires, or 1% of the incidents. With five stations, that's one call per station per month. The council needs to decide how to balance the risk with the taxpayer's capacity to pay for protection. Hopefully, the independent study that the council has authorized will present some alternatives. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Next, we have Jean Grady. Can you state your name and address for us, please? I'm Jean Grady, and I live at 2034 North Third Street. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. I'm here tonight to talk about the ordinance that you will be voting for later in the meeting about the parking on Walrus Boulevard. The parking we're talking about is from 3rd Street to the lake, <clears throat> and it is now stated on the sign there that there's no parking there from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. I must tell you the reason that strange because nobody else in the city has that parking time. The reason that was put in place was in the late 70s when all of the, and some of you remember this, when all of the teenagers in town congregated there and, they, and the officers had a difficult time controlling the huge crowds and the pots that was being smoked at that, at that point. That was the drug of choice then. And I'm not really sure who came up with the idea, well, maybe if we change parking regulations, it'll help. Well, whoever did was great because it did help. And we neighbors were very happy that that prevented them from parking their cars down there and, and congregating at the park. I've lived in my house on the corner of 3rd for 51 years. So I've seen a lot of stuff going on at the park. And most of it, I've been really happy with and participating in. But that particular thing, I was not too thrilled with, and I was glad when that was over. There does not seem to be a need for that particular parking restriction at this point, but no one has thought about changing the rules simply because it's never been seriously enforced. <coughs> the food trucks now are coming to our place on Monday nights, and some in the parking is being enforced at times. I love the food trucks. So many happy people greeting each other, children playing in the bowl. It's just, it's really a good experience. Some of the neighbors would prefer that they not congregate there, not come there on Monday nights. And in answer to that, we, uh, I belong to the Volworth North Point Neighborhood Association, and we had a meeting last week and invited the vendors to come and talk with us and then all of our neighbors and we had quite a few people there and several we listened to everybody's issues on both sides of the fence and have come up with some attempt we're trying anyway to address the issues we do have a lot of people coming into into our area and parking is a problem the church has been quite good about letting us park in their park, letting people park in their parking lot. And then there's lots of parking around in the neighborhoods, and that's good. However, it, it's, the trucks are there until 8 p.m. And if people come and the, they can only park till 6 p.m. on the, one of the main parking areas there, it becomes a problem. 
two, three weeks ago on Monday, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> three weeks ago on Monday, there were 20 some parking tickets given out, and as I was told. And so the fact that this 6 p.m. parking has been ignored and not addressed all these years, people really didn't know that they were going to get a parking ticket all of a sudden for parking there, although they did have a sign out that night. Uh, the, their cars always illegally parked there. If there's any event at the park, last Thursday night, the rec department did its movie night, and there were several cars over there, and nobody had a ticket because they've always done that with events at the park. So that's the big issue. Another thing that I find interesting, I went on the website and most of the parks in the city have no parking from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. Walworth Park has, the park is open, I mean nobody in the park, the park is closed 11 to 4. Walworth has a closing time at 9, so it seems kind of strange that you can go to the park until 9, but the main street for parking on the north side of the park, you're going to get a ticket if you're there after 6. So I think we need to think about that. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Star Girk. Can you please state your name and address for us? Uh, my name is Star Girk. I live at 90 Lake Court. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Thank you. I've lived at 90 Lake Court for over 30 years. I am currently secretary of the Volrath North Point Neighborhood Association, a board member of the Sheboygan River Basin Partnership, and a founding member of Friends of North Point. I want to thank you for responding to the needs of the community with your consideration tonight for changing the parking times on Volrath Boulevard. The Volrath North Point Neighborhood Association supports Food Truck Monday, and your decision to change the parking times will help tremendously with the upcoming road work that will be happening on 3rd Street. By changing the parking times on Volrath Boulevard, this will definitely allow residents to enjoy the park and future events the same hours as other parks. Volrath Park was part of our neighborhood historic walk last year, which drew 65 people. It was our first uh, neighborhood historic walk. We're planning another one for this fall and expect a very large turnout. As Jean mentioned, there are many events at Volrath Park and having convenient and safe parking for our residents will certainly help during these events. Our city parks play a role in improving cities and improving the future for our residents and our visitors. Parks create community and positive experiences. And we are totally in support of changing those uh, parking times on Volrath Boulevard. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Last we have Trig Jacobson. He doesn't appear to be here. Uh, good evening. Uh, on your desk, and I think included in the uh, Friday packet, uh, was a copy of the Strategic Plan's 2018 Action Items and Critical Measures. Uh, I'll be referring to these handouts as I go through my presentation. Uh, up on the screen uh, are the six focus areas that are the foundation for the city's 2017 to 2021 Strategic Plan. Quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, governing and fiscal management, and last is communication. Uh, before I begin with my specific comments, I want to thank uh, Carrie Ahrens and the management team members for updating their strategic information. A little bit of background about some of the measurements 
Uh, some projects are unable to be completed within uh, the 2018, and you'll note in some cases uh, a 2019 uh, time frame is identified. Uh, staff does work collaboratively with uh, internal and external partners. Uh, staff does leverage all intergovernmental resources and other contrib uh, contributions. Staff utilizes public feedback for improvement and modifications. And again, we're working hard on comparative benchmarking with other municipalities uh, to ensure that our efforts are fiscally responsible. Quality of life is the first uh, category or action item. Uh, I'm going to be referring to lines uh, which are on the left side of the first column of your handout. Uh, so as an example, fire response of 38 seconds uh, that is line number eight. Uh, so can you, uh, can you follow which line eight is? Great. Um, so on that 60% of the time, uh, this, the fire departments, uh, again, for fire purposes, did respond uh, 38, uh, 380 seconds or less, which is 6.33 minutes. Uh, the goal is 90% of the fire response is within uh, 380 seconds or less, uh, so we're roughly at two-thirds of that goal. And talking with uh, Chief Romas, uh, th they're going to be changing uh, how they uh, review and quantify this information. Uh, they will be going to every lights and siren run uh, will be calculated. Uh, so as an example, car accidents uh, will be kept track and added in addition to a fire-related response. Uh, second is ISO rating. Uh, currently, we're a number two. I think there's only a couple communities in the state of Wisconsin that are a number one rated community. Uh, Chief Romas initiated uh, a review, and the uh, ISO auditors were uh, in the city of uh, Sheboygan, and, and uh, the final results are uh, a recertification, a reaffirmation of our rating of number two. Uh, this rating is used for by uh, commercial property owners for purposes of insurance. So it's something that, uh, again, number uh, number two is uh, we are one of very few communities in the state of Wisconsin that have achieved it, number two. Uh, but we were hoping possibly to uh, receive an update. Uh, and, and as part of that process, now we have a blueprint as far as how we can take it up to that level, uh, an ISO level number one. In most cases, it involves hiring additional staff. <laughs> uh, next is line 16, 52 neighborhood association uh, meetings. Uh, we are at 74% 74 uh, 74 of our goal for already, just through the first uh, two quarters of 2018. Uh, 52 meetings have been held, to, again, year to date. Uh, for all of 2017, uh, 70 meetings occurred. The next is on line 20. Shoreline Metro fixed route trips per revenue mile. Uh, we are over 100% of our goal uh, already this year, 14.85 uh, uh, with 13 uh, being uh, the goal. Uh, next is, and again, if I could have you go back to the prior page on line 14, uh, part one crime rate for property crimes. Uh, we're at 39%. Um, Versus, you know, again, the first two quarters, you would expect we would be roughly at 50%. So our crime rate is lower than what the benchmark uh, is identified. Um, so 8.65. Uh, last year at this time, um, uh, for the full, uh, we were at 11.125. Uh, versus 11.125, which would be 50%. So we're, we are below uh, where we would expect to be. Uh, so again, that, that is, a, in this case, it's good to be under, uh, under uh, the 50% of the benchmark. Uh, pounds of prescription drugs collected on line 27. Again, there are two uh, organized collections, one in the first six months of the year, one in the second six months of the year. For the uh, organized collection effort, uh, 721, uh, 721 pounds uh, were collected. Again, the, two, the overall goal is roughly 1,200 pounds. Uh, 
In 2017, 1,480 pounds uh, was collected. Uh, last is high visibility education enforcement uh, traffic deployment. Uh, we're already at 89% of our annual goal. Uh, year to date, our eight, our annual goal is uh, nine. Uh, there's two types of uh, uh, deployments. One is a trailer, which is very visible. The second is a, uh, a trademark system card called Armadillo. Uh, and it's basically tra uh, trackers placed uh, and strapped to a pole, not quite as obvious as a trailer. Uh, as, as alders, if you have concerns regarding a corridor where, you, where you're where you receiving complaints or whether you see uh, speeders, uh, please contact the police department and they will talk with you about possibly deploying uh, one of these high visibility education enforcement devices. So something for you to consider uh, in the future. Uh, next is infrastructure and public facilities on line 38, uh, management of the five year inf uh, managed five year information technology plan that has been completed that is part of your five year capital improvement uh, plan that was approved earlier this year. Next uh, on line 40 is replace two fixed route buses and, re and replace two pair transit buses. 90% uh, uh, is identified by Derek simply because they are spec'd, they are ordered, uh, they are pre-funded. Uh, however, delivery, which would be 100%, is not expected until 2019. Next line is refurbished South 8th Street Bridge, line 41. Uh, as, as most of you know, uh, that was completed earlier this year, uh, March or April. Uh, on line 43 is the next item, uh, finalized development of alleys on North 8th Street. Again, this is a multi-year project. It was started in 2017. We're at 60% as of, as of the second quarter of 2018. There's two more projects that are expected uh, later this fall. So we expect to complete this in calendar year 2018. Uh, last is on line 47, linear feet of sanitary sewer relining. Uh, as many of you know, uh, the city has gone to this newer technology uh, it's substantially cheaper to line uh, the existing sewer mains as opposed to digging them up uh, and, and replacing the pipe themselves. Um, through the second quarter, we're at 8,665. The annual goal is 11,092. Uh, that is the same amount that was achieved last year. Uh, by the end of 2018, um, Dave Beeble thinks uh, that we should be very close to that uh, annual goal of 11,092. Next is economic development. On line 50, uh, it says coordinate with Business Improvement District on recreational programming for City Green. Uh, we're at 100%, uh, very successful uh, initiative. Uh, Visit Sheboygan is, is a leading entity uh, coordinating uh, that programming. On line 56 is managed construction of South Point Enterprise Campus. Again, some of you have seen the uh, aerial uh, drone uh, sort of driven uh, videos. Uh, they are uh, ahead of schedule. We expect by Thanksgiving it will be uh, approximately uh, completed except for the landscaping, uh, but buildable sites will be ready as early as uh, prior to the end of this year. Uh, line 59 uh, is, is job creation uh, via the city's based uh, financing program, 29 jobs, uh, which is 193 of our annualized goal. Uh, 15 was the goal set. Uh, Old, Wor Old World Creamery uh, is the lead agent, uh, lead business responsible for the job creation. On line 63, um, based upon Old World Creamery, which are management, uh, production, support staff, uh, they provide us with a list of, of jobs and their salaries. Uh, the average is 42,500. Uh, our goal is slightly higher at 45,000. So we're at 94% of that goal for this one specific company. Last is line 66 uh, regarding new business creation within the community. Uh, seven new businesses have been created uh, in the first six months of 2018 which is 70%, the overall goal is 10. Uh, last year, uh, 15 new businesses uh, were created within the city limits. Neighborhood revitalization. On line 73, 
Continue monthly interdepartmental neighborhood revitalization meetings. Uh, first six months of the year, we're 50% through uh, one meeting per month uh, for overall goal of 12. Line 74, grow the number of neighborhood associations. 50% is what's been achieved with the addition of Memorial Association. Uh, uh, two were created in 17. Uh, and again, we hope to mirror that for 2018. Uh, line 78, develop a plan for annual spring cleanup event. Uh, your public works director will be discussing this at committee. Uh, he's already submitted uh, for my consideration in, for the 2019 budget. What's going to be proposed are four Saturdays in the month of April and May. Uh, they will be linked to organized uh, neighborhoods or neighborhood for those sections of the community that have neighborhood associations those associations will be eligible for the cleanup effort and dumpsters will be provided uh, by the city and, and marketing uh, will also be provided by the city. Uh, next is line 84, number of abandoned vehicles towed. We're already over our uh, goal for 2018. Uh, 86 is the goal. We're at 97 year to date. For all of 2017, uh, 83 vehicles were, uh, were towed. Last is line 85, number of garbage complaints investigated or cited. Uh, we are at 100% of the goal for the year for, with only six months uh, under our belt. Uh, in 2017, 820 complaints were investigated or cited. Uh, so uh, I actually I'm hoping we will not have another year like last year. Next is uh, governing and fiscal management. Uh, line 86 and 87 uh, discusses uh, the city uh, creating, providing, and communicating its, its city plan, its city budget, and our financial uh, audit. Uh, again, both documents have been upgraded to increase uh, transparency for our staff, for you, the decision makers, and ultimately for uh, the general public. Uh, next is line 90 and 91, again related to the city budget and financial audit. Uh, both documents were submitted to a national uh, uh, association called Government, Government Finance Officers Association. Uh, we received and will be presented uh, uh, by Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, next on your agenda, uh, the 2018 budget did receive a, a national award. Uh, that award uh, means that the city is one of, 27, one of 21 cities in the state of Wisconsin to be recognized. Uh, we're the second largest uh, community in the state. Only Kenosha is larger than the city of Sheboygan uh, who have received this recognition. Uh, next is line 98, uh, 24 Munis software modules implemented. Uh, we're at 100% of our goal at 24. The latest module to be uh, implemented is a budget module, uh, which uh, we initiated that in 2000, June of 2018. Last uh, for governing and fiscal management is line 99. Moody's Investor Service bond rating for Sheboygan. It was reaffirmed at AA2. As you're aware, uh, Carol Wirth uh, made a presentation uh, when the bond sales uh, went through. Uh, as a coincidence, uh, tomorrow morning, um, finance department staff uh, will be meeting with Carol uh, to go over our, our credit scorecards so we can see uh, how the Moody's Investor Service uh, rated us on many criteria associated with developing that AA2 rating. Communication, line 101, uh, can you continue citizen communication on an annual basis? Uh, as you're aware, in February and March, uh, that survey was uh, sent out, uh, uh, an electronic survey, and uh, the results were, uh, you were briefed on the results uh, earlier this year. Uh, in conjunction with ARP, uh, and the age-friendly, livable, livable uh, community task force. Uh, the city will be uh, sending out for our residents to fill out uh, our 2019 already in November of this year uh, in order to be eligible for that ARP grant. So uh, in fact, in this calendar year, we'll actually conduct uh, two, two surveys. Uh, speaking of age-friendly, livable community program, uh, the next is on line 103, uh, educate entire community on this program. Again, we hope through the survey, we hope through a, uh, the development of a communication plan that we will enlighten um, 
our residents regarding the, va the value added associated with making uh, this community age friendly. Uh, next is uh, regarding city's social media, uh, line 106, 107, 108, 109, 112, and 13 all deal with Twitter, Nextdoor, Facebook, Nextdoor, and Instagram. Uh, it, uh, in all situations, uh, we are above already for the first, uh, we are already above the annualized uh, goal, uh, anywhere from 109 to 163% of the benchmark. Number of Common Council Committee of the Whole Meetings Televised, we're at 59% of our annualized goal. A year to date, 17 meetings uh, of the 29 goals for the year. Uh, last for communication is on line 111, Number of appearances on Hmong radio station, uh, four to date with an annual goal of six or 66%. Any questions? Again, if you have any, uh, any, after reading through this, if you have any questions or comments, uh, look forward to hearing from you. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. As the city administrator promised, the next item on the agenda is the 2018 Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from the Government Finance Officers Association. On July 10th of 2018, the Government Finance Officers Association announced that the city of Sheboygan has received the GFOA's Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for its budget. The award represents a significant achievement by Sheboygan Finance Department as it re it reflects on the commitment of Sheboygan City Council, the city administrator, and finance department staff to meet the highest principles of government budgeting. In order to receive the budget award, the city of Sheboygan had to satisfy nationally recognized guidelines for effective budget presentations. These guidelines are designed to assess how well an entity's budget serves as a policy document, a financial plan, an operations guide, and a communications device. Budget documents must be rated proficient in all four categories and in, in uh, the 14 mandatory criteria within those categories to receive this award. Sheboygan is one of 1,600 participants in the budget awards program across the nation. The award recipient, uh, recipients have pioneered efforts to improve the quality of budgeting and provide excellent examples for other governments to follow throughout North America. Daryl Hoffland, our city administrator, who leads our annual budget process, joins me in presenting this award to the Sheboygan Finance Director, Nancy Buss, in recognition of her tireless efforts of her and her employees to prepare the annual budget that meets the highest principles of government budgeting. Nancy, Nancy please come forward. We want to thank you for your excellent work. Obviously, this is a team effort to do this, and I really want to thank Carrie Ahrens for all of her help. Next, we'll move on with the uh, mayor's announcements. We have a number of events coming up. Uh, uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday, August 7th, from 5 to 7.30 is National Night Out. Uh, we're going to meet at End Park this year. Uh, there will be a lot of activities, food trucks and other refreshments. Um, there will be some speeches and then everyone there will uh, take a walk around the neighborhood. Um, the uh, Dennis Sullivan, uh, that, uh, that three-masted ship from Milwaukee, will be uh, making a stop in Sheboygan this Friday. <laughs> Uh, they'll be docking at South Pier. They should be arriving at by 3 p.m. on Friday, and from 6 to 8 p.m. they'll offer some free deck tours to the residents that uh, come down there. Uh, there's going to be a Disability Pride Fest. This will be held uh, on August 8th on Saturday from uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., and this will be in conjunction with the Farmer's Market. That's put on by the ADRC. 
And uh, coming up at Fountain Park will be another Sheboygan Pops Band concert uh, this next Wednesday, August 8th, and they'll be in conjunction with the Diane Ramey School of Dance. Our City Green will also be busy. Um, they have adult uh, yoga this Wednesday at 5.30, some youth yoga the Tuesday and Thursday this week at 10 o'clock, and these are the last uh, classes that will be held in yoga uh, this, year, this summer. And then our Levitt Amp concert uh, on Thursday, August 9th, which starts at 6 o'clock, will feature ESSO and Afro Jam Funk Beat to open up, and the feature band that evening will be Making Movies. Uh, Lake Michigan Day is being celebrated this week uh, by the um, Art Center, excuse me, by the Mead Public Library, and they will have a Michigan, uh, Lake Michigan Day poetry event on Saturday, August 11th from 10.30 to 12 o'clock at the Mead uh, Library uh, Terrace outside. Um, elections are coming up. Our city clerk's been working hard to get everything set up, and we have a, a new software program, so voting will be a little different this year. And primary election day is August 14th, and the city polls will be open from 7 a.m. to in the morning till 8 p.m. in the evening. And then Earth Fest is scheduled on August 18th and Saturday. That'll be at Fountain Park from 10 a.m. Uh, till 8 p.m. that evening. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Okay, seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please, well, we have to call the roll, excuse me. Clerk. Nine eyes. Motion passes. Um, under communications, item 3.1 will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Under reports of officers, items 4.1 and 4.2 will lay over. And items 4.3 through 4.11 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, Item 5.1 is resolution number 56 of 1819 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing the docking of the Dennis Sullivan at South Pier on August 10th of 2018 and waiving associated docking fees. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is resolution number 57 of 1819 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing the city staff to submit a bid to the Sheboygan, uh, to Sheboygan County to acquire in-rem tax foreclosed properties on North 10th Street and Erie Avenue. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.3 through 5.12 will be referred to various committees. 
Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 80 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred RC number 331 of 1718 by Public Works Committee and General Ordinance number 25 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, amending the city's snow emergency and winter parking rules to provide for improved clearing of the snow during snow emergencies and to improve the efficiency in clearing streets all winter given reductions in personnel and changes in procedures and recommends approving the ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to send back to committee. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for re-referral. Eight ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 83 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 55 of 1819 by Alderperson Zrinfleisch, Born and Wolf, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a vacant land to offer purchase with KWSBM LLC and recommends passing the resolution. All the person in flesh. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Under general ordinance, uh, item 7.1 and 7.2 will be referred to various Six committees. <coughs> okay, so going back to 6.3, that's RC number 85 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred general ordinance number 10 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Savaglio, repealing general ordinance number 107 of 78, 79, and creating a new, new parking on Valrath Boulevard from North 3rd Street east to its terminus during times when Valrath Park is open and banning parking in the same location when Valrath Park is closed. Recommends passing the substitute ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the substitute ordinan ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Wolf, then Thank Warren. You. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to uh, make a statement that this is a, a really good, good example of how uh, the neighbors of the Valrath and Memorial Neighborhood Associations reached out to their alders and brought forward a, a problem situation and the, um, not only did the alders get involved in making the change, but also the neighborhood associations are also addressing some of the concerns of the Monday night food truck in trying to make it better. I personally see it as a positive. Um, I've only received one negative uh, concern with the situation, and the neighborhood associations are working to try to make it uh, better moving forward. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Born. Yes, I was just going to ask, uh, I, I read over the document, the way I understand it now, the, uh, the food trucks are going to be parked on Vol Volrath Boulevard and then the general parking will be on 3rd Street, is that correct? That's not really true. The, all we're doing is changing the parking rules which uh, don't allow cars to be parked there between 6 and 9 o'clock. So now cars will be able to park there until 9 o'clock and then uh, they, there will be a parking restriction in effect on Volrath Boulevard after that time. 
what happens with those locations the, of the trucks is still uh, something that needs to be decided. And to some extent, the trucks can park wherever they're, they're legal on the city streets. Mm -hmm. uh, we really don't have uh, a way to direct them to park in a certain area because they're governed by the another ordinance. So the, the main convenience then will be people will be able to park on Valrath then without having to worry about getting a ticket until 9 o'clock? Correct, and, and food trucks can park there as well. Okay, sounds is, good. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Uh, then general ordinance um, 7.1 and 7.2 be referred to various committees under uh, matters laid over. 8.1 is RO number 83 of 1819 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting a request for the Discovery World Museum to dock at the Dennis Sullivan at South Pier on August 10th, waiving any dock fees. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And item 8.2 is resolution number 53 of 1819, officially recognizing the Valrath Park North Point Neighborhood Association. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? It's great to see another uh, association uh, coming to this point of becoming a, a full neighborhood association, and this one has been very active in the past, so we welcome them to the fold. Uh, we've seen no other discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters received after the agenda was published. We'll turn it over to the city attorney. 9.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018 and June 30, 2020. That will be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. 9.2 is an RO by the finance director submitting a financial report of the city of Sheboygan for the period commencing January 1, 2018 and ending June 30, 2018. That will be referred to the finance and personnel committee. Next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub e Wisconsin stats where the competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the development of negotiating strategies for the Harbor Center Marina management and operation contract. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session. Nine eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a three minute recess and then reconvene. For our viewers at home, we'll be closing, we'll be adjourning in closed session. This will end our transmission for this evening. Thank you.